the large donations, kind of just over the 100 mark. So what, had, what you can see is a sort of a clear change in behaviour associated with the large donation. So on average, before the large donation, people were donating £20. After the large donation, the average amount given increases to £30. So a single large donation of £100 is increasing average donations by £10. What's also interesting is how persistent it is. So, you know, we kind of looked 10 donations before and then 20 donations afterwards. So it doesn't have an immediate kind of uplift which then sort of tends to fade away. I mean, it's really rather quite persistent. So if you're kind of looking 20 donations further down the page, they're still higher on average than the ones that were coming before the last donation. So if you look in detail, what happens is it kind of, people, you know, sort of encourages people to match the large donation, but then it actually even shifts up the median. So it kind of basically increases the whole of the distribution. So again, this is, I think this is something where you probably knew this, but it's quite nice to kind of see it in the data and think a little bit about the magnitude of the effects. So these kind of, you know, the kind of rough back of the envelope calculations suggest that a single 100 pound donation will kind of pay back in 10 donations time because you get kind of 10 pounds more for each of 10 donations afterwards. It's also the case that the earlier on the page the large donation is made, the kind of the better, the bigger the kind of the, the knock-on effect. So there are two reasons for this. The first is obviously there's more time to pay back. So the earlier the large donation occurs, the longer you know, it has to kind of increase all the subsequent donations. But there's also a second reason. So essentially what people are responding to is the kind of the, is some sort of information value of a large donation. If a single large donation occurs later on and there's lots of other sort of smaller donations around it, people can benchmark themselves against the smaller donations much more easily. Whereas if there's a large donation with relatively fewer donations around it, there's less for them to kind of benchmark against. So there's sort of a sort of subtle kind of behaviour effect. So these kind of donations are having an effect because people are re-evaluating how much they should give in the light of the information provided by the donations in front of them. And the, the fewer donations there are, the more, the bigger the informational signal from each, each donation on the page. So the reverse happens for small donations. Again, it's kind of the same picture. You can see the donations before. Then we have someone who's giving not very much relative to the previous donations, and that also has a knock-on effect on all the subsequent donations. So you, the small donation is kind of defined as being kind of half the, the page mean. And that kind of brings down the amount that people will give afterwards by around five pounds. So kind of ten pounds uplift. This is a smaller relative decline, but it does have a big negative effect on the donations that follow. So you know, so if you remember back to that first uh, figure, two point seven percent of donors said that how much other people had given was very important. Um, so these that these data are showing that they really are looking at how much other people have given when they're deciding how much to give. So just bring the two together, so gender and other donations. Interestingly, so if you kind of look at who responds to large donations, you find that men respond significantly more to large donations than women. So women seem to respond more to an ask, men respond more to how much other people have given. Um, there's no difference in the response to a small donation. Okay, so um, what I wanted to kind of uh, do in the talk was kind of give you an overview of the types of things that we've been looking at and the types of things that we can learn from looking at these administrative data. So these large, rich administrative data sets, you know, the kind of regular data from Just Giving, for us, you know, they're a potential goldmine in terms of learning about donor behaviour and fundraiser behaviour. So as I've explained, this is not, you know, it's not, these are not analyses that we can do overnight. We spend time cleaning and analysing the data. So, you know, sort of doing the kind of gender matching, figuring out what type of events, you know, it all takes a little bit of time, so we can't deliver <coughs> answers to your questions instantly. Um, so we think it makes sense to sort of focus on fundamental behaviour. So we're interested in fund fundraiser motivation, gender differences, donor responses, because we think these are kind of behaviours that are likely to be, to persist, you know, underlie even, you know, sort of short-term phenomena which are kind of interesting, but we may not be able to kind of provide answers to overnight. Um, and as I said, you're going to hear about lots of other different methodologies today, surveys, lab experiments, field trials. These are all kind of, you know, hugely exciting ways that you can kind of learn about donor and fundraiser behaviour. You can also combine analysis of admin data with surveys, lab experiments and field trials to really kind of dig a little bit deeper um, and, you know, 